Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone, we are continuing on our module 3 and that is on pigments and we have been looking into a range of uh, material starting from the cave or the rock shelters of Vimbetka to the cave of Ajanta and then we have also looked into Sittanavasal and so on. So we will be continuing on our discussion on the use of pigments and today we will be starting our discussion with the um, another site which is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site just like Ajanta and Vimbetka that is Elora. So Elora is also situated in the same Aurangabad district as Ajanta is and um, but this, this two sites are almost uh, in the distance of 20, uh, 30 kilometers or 30 to 40 kilometers uh, between each other. Now in Elora we also see similar kind of programmatic that we have seen in Ajanta for example how the living rock structures were excavated to make this rock shelters as well as this caves and this is this can also be compared to the ones we have seen in Sittanavasal as well as in Bhag and so on. So here what we find that I mean the this, um, this Deccani basalt rock uh, out of which this rock formations the plateau landscape is made. So those rock formations are been carved and excavated and through that the caves were uh, produced. So these caves we find there are around 34 caves in the site of Elora which were being made from 600 BC to 1000 B, uh, 600 AD to 1000 AD and during this time period we find that I mean not only one religion but three religions have um, flourished in this place. So we find there are Jain caves, there are Buddhist caves as well as there are Hindu caves. Now the, one, the caves which we find there, so the 1 to 12 we find they are the ones which are the Buddhist caves and then we have the ones. So so the Buddhist caves are also the ones which have been the earliest ones in the entire group. So between 5th and 8th century AD these this caves were excavated. And then we also find there are other caves for example the, the Brahminical caves or the Hindu caves. So those will be the ones from 13 to 29 and th those are the ones we find that they have developed between 7th to 10th century um, AD. And then we also have the Jain caves or the Jaina caves and those will be the ones uh, between like 30 to 34. And the Jaina caves were developed between uh, 9th to 10th century uh, and it also went beyond. So the time period of Elora even though I say that I mean between six, 600 AD and 1000 uh, AD that was the time uh, when most of these developments were happening. However, we can also see that I mean some of the uh, caves they were started being built before that and some of them also were built after this time period. So by 600 to 1000 this is the time period I mentioned which is which we can imagine as when most of the activities were concentrated in. Now what we see here in terms of the architecture that uh, we, we also see similar kind of programmatic as I have said that there are a um, number of those prayer halls, the monastic uh, monasteries or like the vihara structures and then there are temples. So these are the kind of um, the arrangements which we have already seen in the context of Ajanta. We have already seen similar kind of um, uh, strategies being used for carving these living rock structures in Sittanavasal and here we see in Elora as well. Now, if uh, on screen we are looking at the cave number 16 and that is the Kailasha temple and that is perhaps one of the most celebrated caves in the site of Elora. However, and that was made uh, in the 8th century AD. 
Now, uh, we have not really gotten into the Hindu architecture and that is the reason I won't be touching upon the um, details of the temple building which we will be addressing in one of the later modules. So, but uh, what we find here a very specific information about this particular temple is that the, uh, the carving of the rock structures that started from the top of the temple and then it sort of went downwards which is usually the opposite what happens in a temple building that we start from the base and then slowly like the the towers the shikara and the other elements are added on the top of it so you st since this is a living rock structure that i mean the entire structure is carved out of living rock and that is the reason perhaps we find that there was a very different way of carving the temple that took place in um, this this particular site which is uh, not the usual case now, going with the kind of uh, images that we find, then in some of the caves we have remains of the of the murals that those were there in the in this uh, in this uh, cave sites. Now, as, as we can imagine that I mean there were not one but three religion uh, was involved in the same site. So we can imagine that there might have been a huge number of pilgrims and monks and ascetics and nuns and so on. They were active part of these cave sites, and that is the reason we also find that how a number of these caves were uh, decorated with uh, paintings. Uh, the interior mostly I'm, I'm addressing here. Now, uh, here we find that um, there are some of the murals and uh, we, we have two of the representation of the images here um, on screen. Now, one of the, um, the, the one in the left side that we find here, it is a Jaina mural and in this one we have one of the Tirthankaras as uh, standing tall um, and uh, of course uh, cent uh, central uh, part in, in the central part of this image and uh, in this particular image what we find that the some of the iconographical traditions or the conventions that we have already studied so far they have also been uh, carried forward in this images here as well. Now for example what we find here in this uh, image and uh, that this is Jaina uh, monk or the or the the, the Tithankara that is uh, projected at the center stage of this at this image. Here we find that I mean this uh, this uh, Tithankara has also been shown as uh, with with broad shoulder with with the thin vest and of course with the long ear lobes. So the long ear lobes are usually been associated with the the intelligent ones as well as the enlightened ones who have um, who are not only just intelligent but they also have the ears to listen to people's sorrows and people's um, people's problems and that is how it, it it is a sign that I mean the devotees problems will be addressed by the deity. So, this, these are some of those iconographical conventions that we find they were already been established and those signs are also carried forward in the murals in Elora. Now, the dating of these uh, murals that, that usually we find the ones we have on screen, they are probably between 8th to 11th century AD. Now, what we also find here that there is uh, already a prominence of the lines. So, the lines have always been a very important and integral part of the murals and any other kind of painted images in India. And we, with time we find that the, uh, the importance of line have uh, manifested in many different ways. So, for example, in the image that we have in the left side, we see that I mean it is not just the lines which will have have um, very prominent outlines as such, but these are the lines which have the calligraphic quality which, which, are, which are varied, um, a same line can be varied in their depth and that is how the depth of the, um, um, the body as well as the, some of the parts which are more important than the others, those things are emphasized. And the other thing that we also find that I mean how 
the modulation of the body that that also happens around the lines the contour lines so the entire body of this uh, jaina um, uh, figure that that we find that i mean the entire body is not really um, three dimensional as such however that the areas around the um, the arms and the body the um, around the contour lines there we find the slight hint of shading or gradation the tonal variation and that is what that that amplifies this a uh, three dimensional quality of the body so this is something that we find that it is not completely three dimensional but the hint of the rounded body has been uh, projected here and this rounded body this this has been achieved by this this uh, this highly um, skillful calligraphic lines as well as the selective shading or the tonal variation that had also been employed now we also find that there are some of the uh, other uh, characteristic features here for example the halo behind the head which also suggests the divinity of this figure and similar to the other images that we have seen in ajanta and so on here are also some of the very uh, lyrical as well as elegant um, attendant figures so for example if we have we, if we see that i mean there is a very um, elegant um, uh, woman who we see that i mean uh, she is standing right beside the 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 central figure and um, she has similar kind of elegance as well as the the bends of the body they are also reminders of the ones we have seen in ajanta then we also see there are some of the other figures for example here the celestial beings so the ones who are above the ground level and they almost they, they both these figures they, they appear from both sides of the image and they also direct the viewer's gaze towards the central part of this image and they, they are the ones they are flying and the flying that is that is something that is suggested by their gesture by their uh, posture of their uh, legs so they they are the ones who are flying on the sky they are not walking or they are not running so that is something that is suggested by the posture of their legs so there is no other um, wings or anything else is added to their body but their position in the entire mural as well as the posture of their legs that is something those are the ones which are signifier of their um, status as the celestial beings or this divine beings now they are the ones we also find that they are um, they are arriving to greet the central figure in this image something uh, a similar kind of strategy that we have already seen in ajanta as well now this is if these are some of the issues we find that there are uh, some similarities and differences between similarities between ajanta and the murals in elora we find that the kind of um, the details or like i mean the the dedication towards the dedication towards the compositional arrangement as well as uh, maintaining a narrative integrity that was there in ajanta some of the murals in elora might be responding to that but mostly we also find that they are moving slightly on a different um, paradigm with their image making practice and those are the things that might happen because of different kind of um, interaction with the people who are the visual practitioners but that can also happen uh, because of um, the the modes of patronage now a uh, example of that will probably be the, one, the the image that we have in the right side of the screen and that is shiva nataraja and of course as you can imagine that i mean this image will come from uh, one of the hindu caves now this is also a sign that i mean some of the early images of shiva nataraja that shows that i mean how the image of nataraja was um, perceived and how the image was depicted uh, in the two dimensional ground because we usually know the nataraja image in the three dimensional form however there are temple murals and murals in the caves as such uh, which also display the two dimensional depiction now what happens in this particular image that we find that the dynamism of this image has been given much more priority than the anatomy 
So for example, we have the prominent face of Shiva and also like I mean who's uh, painted uh, in this yellow, this bright yellow uh, pigment and uh, we find that i mean the um, the face of shiva who is also uh, which is which is also adorned by uh, his jata mukuta and the crown he wears which is made out of matted locks and then this the earrings and so on and then we also see his large eyes and then we also see that i mean how he is um, uh, he, he is uh, visualed and uh, heavily ornamented as opposed to being shown as an ascetic however what we see here that i mean his head is not really uh, in the proportion of the uh, of the body the way usually the indian artistic anatomy works out so a kind of anatomy that we find in in ajanta and that perhaps also gave rise to uh, the kind of talamana system or the system of measurement or iconography and iconometry so those are the things we do not really see being implemented similarly in this image of nataraja what we find in this image of nataraja however is that how the the hand gestures the movement of shiva's eyes as well as the slight bent in his face and then of course the the way like i mean his all his hands and um, you know his uh, feet they they are they sort of cover the all, the entire picture plane and they sort of reach out to the furthest ends of this uh, picture so that sort of adds to the dynamism of this image and this is also something that we can imagine that how the idea of the dance or the ananda tandava that is the dance uh, which which uh, shiva is known to have performed so the the essence of the dance has become much more important here the dynamism the movement and how his uh, how his different limbs and um, you know how the the color variation and everything else they add to this dynamism that had given much more priority than maintaining this um, you know the anatomical um, proportions and so on so we, we are not really making here a value judgment of how the ajanta murals are different from this one so we are not saying the ajanta murals are superior than the elora murals however we can see that there are certain degree of differences so the differences are much more important than actually coming into a value judgment and saying that this is better and that is not so from there we also wanted to bring our attention towards the the materiality of this uh, paintings and this is this one particular image i wanted to show here and this this is all uh, this this comes from one of the jaina caves and um, this this was perhaps made between 9th and 10th century uh, ad what we have here that i mean a part of the image had um, been deteriorated and that is how we see that i mean how this surface of the rock this this basalt surface has been revealed in the in the left side of the image and then we see there are the layers of the lime plaster that is also revealed in this image and then on the top of that there are the application of pigment based paints and that is how the images are executed now there are certain kind of uh, features of this um, of the entire um, this this uh, murals which which needs to be addressed and that is that i mean we can see how the rock surfaces are built so each of these steps in making these murals are very important for uh, sustaining them as well as making them uh, stay on the wall and that is that i mean here we see the walls the way they are uh, they are carved it is not really even but i mean it's very abrupt and uneven and this has been been done for a very particular reason that if the walls are very smooth then it, it becomes difficult for it to uh, have the um, you know the thick plaster the thick lime plasters to hold on to them so th it requires this uneven surface to make the friction so that i mean the lime plaster this this thick layer of the lime plaster which is applied on the top of it can stay on to it so that is the reason we find that each and every steps which which are associated and which are involved in making these images are crucial 
so from there what we also find that the the lime plaster which is which is added on the top of it 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 also must have uh, followed a similar kind of a strategy as the ones we have seen in ajanta that the lime plaster was completely dried before the painting practice had actually begun so afterwards we find that on the lime plaster the images were drawn and perhaps uh, some kind of like iron oxide or charcoal all those kind of uh, materials were used for drawing the initial images so for example we usually find that how the contour lines are usually drawn at the beginning and then of course like i mean the contour lines of the figures so the ones we find to be the central figures here so their contour lines the images which are also associated um, you know uh, there so the, they are the ones also been drawn first the outlines of the contour lines and then slowly on the top of that we find the application of the paint um, the the pigment based paint take place so usually in a painting like this what we will find that the colors which are on the lighter tone will be applied first so here if we see that there is a there is a combination of um, this earthy red and um, a brown and um, slightly darker towards black and a greenish tone these are the ones which are applied here then perhaps at the beginning this earthy red was applied first on the bodies and then we see that i mean the slight hint of modulation might have also been added with a slightly darker tone of the same color or it might have been uh, been been uh, mixed with a little bit of brown and then we also see that i mean how the other colors are been added in by the sides and um, there is a tremendous uh, importance of the of the color balance so that is the reason what we find that uh, how the use of red is complemented by the use of brown and green so in the entire scene the balance between these colors have been maintained superbly and then and the uh, after the application of this initial uh, patches of color or like fi filling the bodies and so on then the ornaments the ornaments we find here and here and so on and the crown and so on these are the ones which are added afterwards and for adding the ornaments we find usually that how um, a color which will be much more in a lighter tone for example a uh, yellow mixed with white or red mixed with white and so on those are the ones which are used there so with this things we what we also find that uh, in in this cases in this tonal variation that is the, uh, the the tonal variation between this central figure and the ones who are the uh, adjoining ones uh, those those are enhanced by the use of this ornaments as well as how the how this lighter um, this touches of this lighter tones they um, punctuate the um, the importance of certain figures more than the others so afterwards we find that um, perhaps towards the end the darker tones and so on those are the ones which are added and then at the end either the um, the the highlights in the ornaments they are added or like i mean the um, uh, the highlights of the ornaments are added before application of the the most um the 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 darkest tone so these are the similar uh, the kind of like processes we find them to be um in employed in making these murals and this is something we find not only prevalent in this murals in elora but in a number of the places however i mean this is just a um this is just a basic description of how this color strategy and the scheme works out but it's not like that i mean there are no back and forth that it's also not like that i mean there are no other ways to apply the colors so but this is this is usually the way like from the light tone to the dark tone um usually like i mean the the painting process progresses and at the end or towards the end the ornaments and and the places where um the the highlights are been drawn they are added now 
one other thing that I mean we must also remember that um, this this particular way of painting or this particular way in which all the details are added those are also been possible because of the uh, of the opacity of the colors. So, as I have already mentioned in the earlier lectures that the colors were opaque in their nature. So, they are pretty thick we are not talking about watercolors which are really light and uh, the patches of the watercolor are just uh, very light patches of watercolor are applied onto either uh, walls or paper. But we are talking about that I mean how um, a thick layers of the colors are applied onto the surfaces. So, that this uh, the opacity of the figures as well as the objects and all the other elements can be enhanced. And that is something we find in most of the mural paintings in, um, in uh, India and that is not something that just started uh, in Ajanta or in Elora or Sitanavasal, but this particular way of application of the colors that started from the 2nd century BC at least from Ajanta, we see them to be continued at in, the, in the medieval times, early modern times and even in the later times.